Thank you for joining me in this video. In this video, we are going to talk about adding attribute data to vector layers. But before then, if you remember in the last video on digitizing, I made mention that a new version of Quantum GIS has been released, which is called Quantum GIS version 2.0 do for. So let me quickly use this opportunity to walk you through the similarities and differences, at least the major ones between the latest version 2.0 and the earlier version 1.8 we are using for this project. So you can go to the official website of the Quantum GIS, that is qgis.org, and download the latest version 2.0 do for. And also the official website has been changed. So the appearance is no longer like before when it used to be 1.8. So now if you go there, you will see a lot of differences between the old website interface and the new website interface. So I've already downloaded and installed the latest version on my PC. Actually, when you download and install the latest version, even though you have the earlier version on your PC, it will not overwrite it. So they work hand in hand. Both version of the software that is 1.8 and 2.0 could be installed on the same pc and work simultaneously so this is the latest version 2.0 and this is the earlier version the quantum gis desktop 1.8 and then the quantum gis browser 1.8 then this is the latest version quantum gis 2.0.1 the desktop the desktop and then the browser 2.0.1 so let me open the desktop and then let's take a look at the major similarities and differences between the two GIS software. Now launching the, after launching the latest version, you will hardly notice any major differences between it and the earlier release 1.8. So this is the latest version that's 2.0.1 do 4 and then we have the earlier one which is 1.8 <clears throat> so let me reduce let me compress my screen and put the two software side by side i'm going to put the earlier version 1.8 on the left hand side and then i'll put the latest version 2.0 on the left hand on the right hand side just like this so this is the this is the earlier version 1.8 then this is the new release 2.0 so just as you can see, virtually the major appearance of the interface are still the same. We have the layer menu, the layer pane. We also have the layer pane here. We have the drawing window here. That's the map view area. We also have the map view area here. So the status bar is there on both versions. So we have the status bar here. We also have the status bar here. So, but the major difference you can see from the top, from the tools bar, title bar, sorry, is that the, the version name is written. Here we have QGIS, Quantum GIS 1.8.0, Lisboa. And here we have Quantum GIS 2.0.1, Dufour. So this is one of the major differences you will see. Then if you come, to, come down to the menu, Instead of having file here, in the earlier version 1.8, we have project in the latest version. But the submenu item still remains the same as the earlier release. Then another major difference that could be identified is maybe in the icons. The icons have been redesigned. At least the graphics have changed drastically if you take a look at the 
this new or this save buttons you see that it's not appearing the way it used to be on the earlier versions so at least it's a major difference and other tools also have different appearances so let me quickly open this particular project we are working on in the same in the latest version 2.0 so i'll go to the open dialog box and then select the project and click on open so because the project is open in another software that's why i'm seeing this window so i'll click on ok and then i have the same project in the two versions so if you open up the attribute table for the earlier version that's 1.8 this is the appearance of the attribute table so if you open up the same attribute table for the same layer in the two in the latest version that is 2.0 you readily observe that there are some major differences or changes in the two attribute table this attribute table is for 1.8 and then this attribute table is for 2.0.1 so as you can see the menu the buttons the icons in the attribute table in the earlier version that's 1.8 is placed below the table itself the table content itself here while in the new release the attributes the icons has been taken above the main table in the attribute table window and then also just below it just below the icons in the in the earlier version you can see the query and other search options but here the query and search options are not there they are hidden under a pane uh, so these are basically these are the major differences in the new release and then the earlier release so you can explore the two and discover more similarities and differences so but for some, for now just have it in mind that a new a newer version of quantum gis has been released and uh for the purpose of this video tutorial i think i'm going to stick with the earlier version since i've started the tutorial with 1.8 so i would rather stick with it and complete the tutorial with 1.8 so let's go back to the business of the day now in this video we're supposed to take a look at adding attribute to our vector layer So the first thing I would like us to know is that all our attributes data that are found in our attribute table are related to features on the map. What I mean by that is that all of these features, all of these map features you can see on the map, they have one-to-one -one relationship to attribute data inside the attribute table for example if you want to know the amount of trees that have been digitized you can simply go to the tree layer right click on it and then open up the attribute table and then from the attribute table dialog box when you scroll down to the last row you will see the number the total the last number which actually represent the last the number the total number of items found or trees found on our what on our vector layer that has been digitized so this is just number 462 so if you go back and add and digitize more trees this number will increase by the amount by the number you of trees you have digitized or you have added so now please take note of this number i will go back and digitize one or two trees and then i'll come back to check if the number will increase has increased or not so here we have 
462 as the last number, which is the total number of trees that, that have been digitized. So I'm going to cl close the attribute table and then go to my tree layer, toggle the edit, then add future. So we have two trees here or three trees that have, that have not been digitized. So I'm going to digitize them and then go back to my attribute table and then confirm the number of trees that have been digitized. So save edit, exit toggle edit. Then go back to the trees, attribute table, then right click and then select open attribute table. Then now scroll down to the bottom and you will see that we used to, the, the last number before we add, added the feature was one, 462. And now that we have added three features, we have 463, 464 and then 465 as the last number. So the total number of trees that have been digitized is that. And remember that in computer program, especially in database programs, the first number is zero. So counting starts from zero in computer, in most computer applications. So the first number here is zero, one, two, three, four, five. So it means the last, the total number of trees that have been digitized is actually 466 no, for, not 465 if you include this zero in your county it's going to be 466 not 465 so but that one is that is just by the way so the same thing is applicable to all layers all the layers have the same concept as the three layer that is all the future in the attributes in the attribute table are related to features in the what in the map for example if you talk about the buildings if you want to know the number of buildings that have been digitized instead of going one by one to count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen you get lost you will not be able to complete the counting but if you simply open up the attribute table of that layer that's the building layer and then scroll down you will see the last number of building that, that has been digitized so for now we have five four six one which in our own counting is going to be five four six two because the first number there is zero so we have five thousand four hundred and sixty two buildings that, are, that have been digitized If I go back and digitize more buildings, this number will increase. So let's do that. Go back to the building, go back to your map, to your layer, to your layer panel, right click on the building layer, toggle edit, add future. So let me simply digitize this building. That's building number one. Digitize another one, the second one. Then let's digitize this one, the third one. So save edit, toggle edit, then save project. Then go back to the building layer. Right click on the layer, open the attribute table, scroll down, and then you see that the number will have increased. The last number used to be 5461. And now we have added three features, and they are appearing on our attribute table so now if you select if you write if you click on the row to select the row click on the row number to select the entire row on your attribute table the same feature or the feature that has that attribute on the map view area will also be selected on that layer just like that as you can see, this feature is, is highlighted in yellow, signifying that it is the one that is selected. If I select the last one, it will select it just like that. If I select this, it will select it just like that. So all of these features have direct relationship with the attribute table on the attribute 
with the attribute data on the attribute dialog box or on the attribute table. So each and every attribute here has its element or has its future on the map on that vector layer. So having known this, uh, it is a good basis for us to now know that when we delete a record from the attribute table, we are actually deleting that particular feature on the map. So this relationship whereby a feature on the attribute table is related to the feature to another feature on the map is what make GIS different from digital cartography. Because based on my experience, I observe that many people usually confuse digital cartography for GIS. Digital cartography has to do with just the mapping aspect itself. Why GIS combine both mapping and database? So this is the database another word for this attribute table is database and all our data here have a relationship with the what map features and there are so many things you can do with this attribute table and that is what make gis a powerful system Now, since we now know that maps, our map features, our vector layer is now directly has one on one, one to one correspondence to our records, to the records on our attribute table. Let's see how we can edit, update some of the elements that are on our attribute table. But before then, let me digitize this particular feature and then have another, have additional uh, data on our attribute table. So it's a building layer. I've selected the building layer and then I've toggled the edit on. So I've added that feature. I've digitized that building. So now save edit, then exit toggle edit. So now go back to the building layer. Let's use the building layer this time around. Right click on it, open the attribute table. And then I know that the last feature is going to be this particular building that I've done that I've just digitized. So if I right click, if I click on the on the records number, it will select the feature for me just like that. So if I want to delete it, if I delete the record from here. From the attribute table to also delete the element on the map the future on the map for me so in order for me to delete this record what i will do is to on the toggle edit just as i will do in the what in the map view area by clicking on the toggle edit button below here so if click on the toggle edit button you notice that all of these icons that are disabled are now active so all of these icons are now active so if i select the row and then i click on delete selected this button is a delete selected button so it will delete the selected item when you move your mouse over the buttons you will see their name and what they, what they do so this button is will delete the selected feature and you can also use a shortcut that is control d to delete the selected feature from your attribute table as well as on the map so clicking on this button will delete this record which is record 5465 on our attribute table and it also delete it on the what on the map so clicking on delete it will you'll be prompted to confirm your deletion so click on OK and then the record will be deleted on the attribute table and as well as on the map. So if you want to delete a record, that's how to go about deleting your record. 
So note that if you select all, you can actually select all the features. If you select all the features and then you click on delete, all the records will be deleted just like that. So any feature you select and then click on the delete button, it will delete that feature for you. So after selecting a feature, you would like to unselect it. So this button that is called unselect would clear the selection for you. This this very first button. So clicking it would clear the selection for you. So this feature, this role is selected. That's this record for this particular building. If you click on unselect, it will unselect it for you. So that's one way to clear selections from your attribute table. So, uh, another thing I would like to show you now is how to create new columns. That is new fields. Technically, in GIS, when you open up the attribute table, these columns are called fields. Why these rows? are called records so let's see how to create a new column that is a new field let's assume you want to add another attribute field that is for now for this building layer attributes we have uh, the id the name of the building the size of the building the purpose of the building let's assume you want to put the year The year of the building that's the age when the building was constructed that's year of construction so you can add an extra column for that unless and in order for you to do that you use this button called new column or you can use the shortcut command that is control w so a dialog box will appear where i'm going to add the new column so you can type in the name of the new column. Maybe year, year of construction. Then the type of the field is going to be a whole number. The precision, the width, let's make it 10. Then you click on OK to create that particular field, year of construction. So this is how to create a new field. If you have more field to create, this is how you go about creating them. Then if you are done, you will now click on this save edit or you press Ctrl S on your keyboard. So save edit and then you can exit from the toggle edit. So if you want to do more editing to your table, you have to on the toggle edit, then you do whatever you want to do. Assuming you want to type in the year of course this building was constructed that's the building owned by mr samson you simply click double click on the cell where you want to edit and then you can now type in the year maybe this building his building was constructed in the year 1992 so it, you type it just like that and then you click outside to apply it for this the same thing you double click and then you type in the year the building was constructed 1982 if you have another one here the same thing maybe this was constructed in 1999 you click also to apply it so also if you want to edit an existing record maybe this name you made a mistake in typing this name and you want to change it maybe instead of mr samson you want it to be Mr. Samuel. So you double click there, then you delete the record and then you type in the correct thing. Samuel, just like that. Then you can now click outside to apply your changes. So that is how to edit existing records on our attribute table. And also we have seen how to create a new field that is new column in our attribute table.
So what about if you want to delete, if you want to delete an existing column? Let's assume you want to delete this particular column, which is the year of construction. So in order for you to do that, you simply use uh, this particular button here. This particular button, delete column, or the shortcut, control L, will delete a particular column for you from your attributable. So when you select this column, this button, delete column, a dialog box will appear. Then you now select the column or the field you want to delete from your attributable. I want to delete this year of construction. So I'll select it and then click on OK. And then the field will just will go just like that. Then I can save my edit. Then I can exit the toggle edit. Note that before you can do anything inside of your attributable, you you will have to on the toggle edit before you can edit anything inside your attributable. If the toggle edit is not on, you can't make any changes to attributable. And after doing your changes, make sure you click on save edit before you exit the toggle edit to apply your changes or to save your changes. So we have seen how to add new columns and how to add new records. And we have also seen how to delete and edit new columns and new records. So basically, these are some of the things you can do in a attribute table. So we are going to see more options, especially the search option, which is technically called as known as query in the attribute table in the next video, which is going to focus more on basic query in the quantum GIS. So for now, I would like to stop here. And then uh, if you have any question, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you for watching. And have a nice day.